You know, what's really frustrating about dealing with AI tools and automation tools is that I just don't know what's right for me. You know, like I've been using make.com and Zapier for a long time, but then you throw this other one into the loop. We got Bardeen and I'm just like, have I seen a cooler automation tool? No. Do I know what to do with myself about it? Not really. But what I do know is how to compare some of the different things between Bardeen and Zapier as somebody who has experienced a lot of good, bad, and ugly with all the various automation tools out there on the market. And yes, this video is sponsored by Bardeen. However, I do wanna say that I am keeping this unbiased and gonna give you my honest feedback on my thoughts on Zapier versus Bardeen. Let's dive right into it. So first and foremost, when you log into your Zapier account, it essentially functions as a system where you can create new zaps, which are called automations, and then you work in a sequential order, creating a trigger and then a bunch of actions that follow. Now, they did just recently implement this new AI automation option. So say for example, I type something that would say, when a new lead form is submitted in tally, create a notion database item and send a message to a private Slack channel. When I press generate, this is going to take what I said and try to figure out how to make an automation that goes along with this. Now, this is something that's very new to be frank, um, and this does work and I've tried it. And essentially now I'd go in, choose my account, connect whichever form I want, and then connect my account for Notion and so on and so forth with Slack. The difference between this tool and Bardeen, however, is actually you'll notice if I click right here or press Option B, Bardeen is a more global tool since I can open this anywhere. It's a Chrome extension that allows me to create playbooks, which are essentially the same thing as zaps in the sense that they're both automations. Both different platforms have a variety of different playbooks and zaps to choose from, um, but you can search through them in a much more digestible format, in my opinion, with Bardeen. And when it comes to the AI, functionality, it actually has something called a magic box, which is a tool that definitely precursored the Zapier AI automation creator. The magic box dropped, as you can see here, my guy Renat talked about this in April, which is over five months ago. And Zapier drops this update just now. And I'm like, all right, all right, all right. Can, can, we, can we call out the fact that clearly you're late to the bandwagon on this. Because in a very similar sense, I could type something that would be like, when a new Google Sheets row is created, make a Notion page. It would just ask me to connect my Google Sheets, my Notion, and it would guide me through the entire workflow as well. This is some pretty simple stuff. However, as I go through and connect everything here, like my Notion account, I then would be brought to the playbook, very similar to what I had inside of Zapier. And if I wanted to, I could edit it further in the builder. So I could go in here and we can play with the automation a little bit more. What I like about this is that it does function a little different than what a Zapier zap does. And what I mean by that is in Zapier, you're gonna require a specific trigger. While we do have ones that can be triggered on a when instance, there are also different times where we actually have the ability to schedule automations inside of Bardeen. And you can do that inside of Zapier too, but a big problem that I have is when you look at the pricing. So let's say you wanted to have something in the realm of recurring automations. There's 750 tasks per month. To clarify what that means, tasks per month is each step within this, okay? And when it comes to this, especially at scale, you clearly get way more credits per month to go towards your automations if you're utilizing Bardeen versus Zapier. When you end up running a recurring automation inside of Zapier, it feels like you're almost running out of all of the zaps almost immediately. And another frustrating thing is that for the free plan, you get single step zaps. I don't know <laughs> how that's really helpful. I haven't used a free plan in years. I wish I would have upgraded earlier, 
But I also wish I would have went to Bardeen earlier too, because even on the free version, you get unlimited non-premium usage and get to mess around with longer automations. Whereas in the free realm on Zapier, it's very limited. I also wanted to say that when it comes to scraping, yep, Zapier doesn't have that. Um, just to be blunt, if I go to an example tweet here, and I were to go to one of my favorite content creators, Thomas Frank, and I opened up their tweet, I then could go to Bardeen, and while these could be recurring, what I do if I go from my auto book section, which has my when, so the ones that have triggers, and then the scheduled ones, which are the other auto books, I could go to my playbooks, which has a really cool option, as you can see here, it's a summarize option, and this is where I can run specific playbooks. There is an option to utilize the Zapier Chrome extension to push through automations, but it's not nearly as good. And this one generally is around scraping, which if you had to take a wild guess, was a lot more effective than pushing through things without scraped page data. And while most automations in Zapier are limited to whatever database you put them in in Notion or Slack channel you end up putting it in, you have the ability to type in whatever table that you want and adjust it every single time or save it for later and have it do the same ran automation just by pressing the playbook. But it's completely up to you, whereas you'd have to make multiple of the different automations inside of Zapier for it to be easy to do, whereas this, I just look up the table inside of Airtable and it's easily grabbed. So as you can see right here, I can press remember inputs and it would much more easily remember the inputs like I had with Airtable, and then I could save and run the playbook easily. And then if I wanted to, I could simply right click, press duplicate, maybe put a number to the side of it. So that'd be like number two, and the other one would be number one, or indicate it with some sort of difference in the playbook name. But then I would be easily be able to go in the builder, adjust anything as needed. As you can see, there's scrape data here on this homepage, which you just don't have when it comes to Zapier. And that's very frustrating for me as somebody who loves automation. Being able to grab page data, like this is such an easier workflow. Me to go here, press, like this is an awesome one, get sentiment from YouTube comments and save to Airtable. If I go to my YouTube channel and I wanna see how comments are going on a specific video, who's this dingus? All right, let's go here. <laughs> And let's go to this get. It's gonna scrape the page data and utilize OpenAI to get the sentiment analysis. So I'm gonna look for the table within Zapier. So let's do YouTube sentiment. You can see right here, I have all these maps. So I wanna say, let's do five. I believe there's, eh, there's four comments here. Let's do four, all right. Now we do wanna remember the inputs, but I'm only gonna pick for the Airtable base so that I can do that continuously and go to like multiple different videos and just run the automation. I can't scrape stuff with Zapier. I just don't understand why they don't have it, truthfully. It's actually kind of frustrating. So here we go, YouTube sentiment. Let's view what it outputted. I'm very curious, so you press view and it'll bring you to your base and you'll see here. All right, here's a bunch of new ones. These have been the comments recently. Like what you did here, I quite like Edge. Hate me for it, but never use Chrome. It's Edge or Safari. Seems the same on RAM too, very true. Mixed sentiment, I know where it came from. If I click here, I get the author link. Like, what are we even talking about? All right, if I wanted to go through like 10 YouTube videos, I could do that in a moment's notice, I feel like. If I go to another one here, let's grab three comments. I can go here to that new saved playbook that saved what base it was gonna go to. I can click on it, you see it's already there. I'm gonna grab three comment sentiments plus run playbook. And there's so many different applications with this. I can do this for CRM scraping on things like LinkedIn. And frankly, just Zapier is so limited from the scraping standpoint that to me, it's kind of a turnoff. As you can see right here, we have a couple more. I need some advice. So I'm currently managing a team of 35 students in a student club at my uni. And I wanna make sure that uh, this is actually a pretty deep question. So I get to see that though, see that there is a general neutral sentiment to go along with it. And that was figured out by OpenAI. I have the information of their YouTube channel for later. And overall, if I wanted to find any sort of scraped information, I'm going to be able to do that inside of Bardeen, whereas with Zapier, I'm not. So it's really frustrating for me that Zapier's pricing has always been as stingy as it has been. Even other companies like make.com have a significantly more test for less of a price. 
And I also think it's frustrating since you don't have as many options inside of Zapier. You have playbooks that can scrape, auto books that can either do it based off a trigger or on a schedule. And for me, that scraping tool is just one step above what you can do generally with Zapier. I'd like to thank Bardeen again for sponsoring this video. And thanks for allowing me to scrape things because I don't know why other automation tools don't let me do that. If you like this video and want to see other videos on how to improve your skills using productivity tools like Bardeen and Zapier, make sure to check out this video right here.